Project Resistance is, even the name is just to go against the grain. You know, we're not talking about just resistance in terms of picking things up and putting them down, being a resistance on the body that's part of it. But what we, what we try to do and, and, and strive for is to be resistance against the norm. And right now you have two norms. You have the strength and conditioning world, you have your CrossFits, you have your you know coaches that coach actual sports and athletics teams or just strength and conditioning coaches. And then you have your three-dimensional movers, is your functional movement patterns, right? These are the guys that, that want to focus on how do we move the body in real time in motion. And they're both great. They've both seen a lot of results in what they do. However, I don't see them as too different. I see them as complements that would meet in the middle. And if they met in the middle, it would be right here. Project resistance, that guy. What we like to do is we like to take the deadlifts, the squats, the snatch, the clean and jerk. I love those movements, but I still found myself getting bigger, stronger, faster in the gym, however, still not necessarily getting better at my sport all the time. Not everything in the clean translates to a faster sprint. There's no change of direction in a clean. There's no true amount of deceleration other than in that squatted pattern that would help me in the same way as if I'm cutting in, in American football, and that's what I played. So that was problems for me. So then as I got older and then got into the fitness industry, I see these guys that are functional, training and it almost looks like it's more so chaos how much chaos can I create I'll stand on a ball and reach with dumbbells and then I'll, I'll uh, take a cable machine and do 16 different patterns with it which is fantastic for neural development fantastic for movement patterning and challenging the fascial tissue in the lines that we need but you can't tell me that squatting is irrelevant you can't tell me that my feet will never do this you can't tell me that I don't gain a significant amount of performance with a clean and jerk or snatch. It's just limited. So these guys are arguing, and a lot of times they're not even arguing the same thing. They're arguing apples to oranges a lot of times, but they just have different approaches. Now I think, I think, that the reason that the functional guys stay with the functional stuff is because they don't want to have to learn how to do both. And I don't think that the strength and conditioning guys want to worry about all these fascial lines when they can just focus on how do I teach the mechanics and the movement of cleans and jerks and snatch and deadlifts. So I don't think that people have stayed on either side or the other because they truly have a problem. I think they just found something that they like and they stuck with it. But it'd be ignorant to say that I can't deadlift and see benefits from it and then can't do these movement patterns and see benefits from it. Why not do both? And that's what we do. We do the both. I believe I can gain power doing three-dimensional movements relatively heavy to the movement pattern. I believe that I can do a deadlift instead of just working to max effort, change this deadlift ever so slightly to create a different response on the body. So we're trying to marry those two. That's what we do.